Chaos is coming, Guardian. I dare you to defy it. <laughs> it has been a stunningly beautiful day here in the Sunshine State, specifically Gainesville, Georgia, and Florida. Need I say more? One of the top rivalries in all of college sports tonight. It's going to be settled on the volleyball court. The third ranked Gators about to take on Georgia, who knocked off a top 10 team last week. Hey, everybody, Sam Gore along with Missy Whittemore. We know about this rivalry, Missy, but interesting dynamic tonight between these two teams. Yes, it is. Georgia, a very dangerous team, went to Georgia Tech just a week ago, knocked off the number 10 team in the country. Florida sits at number three, but this is a team who is definitely recalibrating as they face the challenge of trying to replace their All-American setter, Alexis Stuckey. Yes, it was last weekend that Alexis went down in the Wisconsin match when they were up 2-0. She released this post a few days ago confirming she has torn her ACL and MCL. She will be out the rest of the season, but the good news is she can apply for a medical hardship at the end of the year and possibly have three more years here. So. If it's not going to be Stucky, they've got to go to a committee, Missy. Here's who they're counting on. The offense starts with the freshman, Kennedy Martin, with her four kills per set and what she is able to do at the net blocking. She is second in the entire league in points per set. They're going to need her tonight. Along with Anna Dixon, the transfer fifth-year player, her versatility becomes all the more important as this team still tries to figure out what is their best lineup moving forward. And I'll tell you what, if Stucky is the heart of this team, Ellie McKissick out of the backcourt is absolutely the soul of these Gators. The energy she provides in the backcourt is contagious. Well, this is normally where I'd ask you a little bit about Georgia, but Krista Blakely is an aspiring broadcaster, wants to follow in the footsteps of Georgia alum Maria Taylor. So she's going to tell you what Georgia's got to do to win tonight. In order for Georgia to beat Florida, the Bulldogs have to apply pressure from the service line. They also have to be aggressive offensively and also take care of the little plays. So when they get tips, they have to make sure to send it back as aggressive as possible to put them in the best position to score. And last but not least, the Bulldogs have to play Georgia volleyball. If they follow those keys to victory, they will be successful. That's all, back to you, Sam. Well, thank you, Krista. One take wonder. We did that today after their game day serve and pass. Uh, Good job, and I uh, certainly can't argue with what she said Georgia needs to do. I couldn't agree more. As we say, you want to apply the pressure, don't feel the pressure. Kennedy Muff serves to begin this match. Georgia spent a lot of time serving today. Long rally to open this match. Left side attack by Haugen. Muff settles under it. Kennedy Martin dug up by Brower. And out of the middle, Sophie Fisher scores the first point of the match. Sophie Fisher started her career at Kentucky, transferred to Georgia a season ago, had spent time at the pins at Kentucky, but plays in the middle now for the Bulldogs. So versatile. I love the fact that they are not afraid to find her offensively, even at a system. They will throw balls to her up in the middle. Co-offensive player of the week in the SEC last week. A back to serve now is Bailey Cox. Cox targeting McKissick. Back set to Fitzpatrick. And she is stuffed. Fisher getting most of that, denying the Fitzpatrick attack. With that one swing, she already matches the number of errors that she had in the entire match at Auburn. AC Fitzpatrick coming off of an absolutely phenomenal match. Only one error, 15 kills at Auburn. She had a match. Martin tried to answer in the middle, Georgia digs it up. Evans puts it over, free ball here for Florida. Fitzpatrick again, and this time, finds success. She had 15 kills at 368 against Auburn, and that was a big moment for these Gators, don't you think, Missy, to get that win over Auburn in their first match after Stuckey's absence? You said it. It's all about the fact that that was their first match, complete match, as they try to find a lineup, as they switch to a new setter. It's all about timing and rhythm, and that takes time. Unfortunately, Florida jumps right into league play, and they don't have time, so it's going to be difficult. Well, they were using lineups they have not used all season in that win over Auburn. That was a, a gut-check win. Incredible Auburn team almost pulled off the upset. 
And tooling the block on the left side is Estelle Haugen, and Georgia jumps out to a 3-1 lead. Estelle Haugen, coach told us, is most definitely their most improved player from a season ago. Played in only 24 sets last season and has been asked to really step in and to handle a six rotation load. And she is making it look easy, hitting it a higher clip than they had even expected. That's her serving Victoria with the receive. Martin cuts it. And a little too sharp point, Georgia. So Haugen will go back to the service line. Haugen, by the way, is uh, one of three triplets. She uh, has brothers Isaac and Truman. They both go to Georgia with her. Play on the Georgia ice hockey team, the Ice Dogs club team. Victoria pushes it over. Nice dig by Haugen. Evans' first swing is terminated. That's our first look at Casey Evans, the graduate student who is no stranger to success here in Gainesville. Georgia came here a season ago and absolutely stunned Florida. Florida was ranked number 11 in the country, and they swept the Gators behind the arm of Casey Evans. 16 kills in that match led all players. Georgia has a history of producing upsets against Florida. Their highest ranked win was against the Gators in 2020. And the dogs come out biting. Fisher is basically a fortress at the net here early. And so Georgia has won six of the first seven points to take the lead here against the third ranked team in the country, offense and defense. The chaos is coming, Guardian. I dare you to defy it. <laughs> you fought for 162 games. He's in there. Now your shot at glory is hanging by a thread. A thin line between moving on and going home. Oh, wow. The moment is here. This is the MLB Wild Card Series, October 3rd through the 5th on the networks of ESPN. Uh, Georgia jumps out to a 6-1 lead. We'll see if Florida can respond. Of course, they are playing without Alexis Stuckey, uh, one of the top setters not only in the SEC but in the nation. And uh, she is having to play a different role now on this team over on the sideline. Stucky also one of the most liked stars in the sport as well. The uh, affection has just been outpouring for her and well wishes. And another kill on the right side. That time the swing from Georgia draws Sophia Victoria into the net, the net violation against the Gators for another point for Georgia. 5-0 run now for Georgia. Georgia again beating Georgia Tech last weekend at Georgia Tech in front of the largest crowd they had ever had there. And the service error by Georgia. For Florida, you're now going to see Anna Dixon into the match. Florida has used her at Auburn, they started the match with her on the right side, trying something a little different. She is a former Penn player, but they had been using her in the middle, and today they've gone back to the middle lineup with Anna Dixon. Yeah, volunteered to play middle this year over the summer. Same, we see a service error from Florida. That was certainly an issue in the Auburn match. Most recently, 20 service errors for Florida, but Auburn matches it, 20 apiece. Well, that was such a... <laughs> Gut, gutsy match. I mean, yes. after a while, it was just will to win. Muff unable to save that. And again, uh, Florida still trying to find the uh, chemistry out there. 
I think one of the big challenges for Florida as well is that their passing lineup looks so comfortable with Alexis Stuckey on the floor. And I think right now the passers are almost trying to be so perfect. They so want to help Kennedy Muff as she makes her adjustment into that starting setting role that sometimes I think they're trying to pass so perfect they just need to hang it up in the middle of the court, let her go get the ball, just learning to trust one another all over again. Kennedy Muff again uh, played her the bulk of her career at Division II Flagler College. Uh, she worked the summer camps here for Mary Wise and came in trying to be the B-side setter for this team and now is thrust into a major role. Point Gators. And right away we see the impact of Anna Dixon in the middle as she gets a quick block there on Casey Evans and that is a player that they desperately want you to slow down. Florida right now with still just one kill. That was A.C. Fitzpatrick. Good serve from Martin. Evans gets it back in play. Muff with the back set. Down the line goes Dixon. It's out of bounds. Point Georgia. And what you'll see there is that Florida will ask Anna Dixon to block in the middle and then often she'll release to the right pin and actually swing from the right pin where she's very comfortable as an attacker. Brower coming off a double-double against Georgia Tech last weekend with 39 assists and 14 digs. She is one of the top setters in the league. Victoria, high-flying attack. It's pushed over. Muff going back to Victoria for the tip. Net violation on Georgia will give Florida the point, but they were going to score it anyway. And I really, the choice of the Sophia, Sophia Victoria here, understanding where the open spot is on the court. She draws them into the net there with that tip. But that is what Florida's left sides have done so well and what they'll have to continue to do well is match management. Understanding the shots that are available to them. Now both as seniors are really doing a great job of that. Hitting error by Harper, another point for Georgia. Now Florida, with three top 10 wins, Penn State, Stanford, Minnesota, of course, uh, they were leading Wisconsin last weekend when Stuckey went down. That's still the selection committee recognizing that. They were picked third in the reveal today. And that three or five set win over Auburn was a big statement as well. Muff, that is her first kill of the season. She has been trying that in her last three matches and finally gets it right. Love it. You have to love the confidence of Kennedy Muff as she's been inserted into this lineup and she is going for it. As we said, it was really just Mary Wise knew that it would take a special person to come here. And now a block alongside Hannah Dixon. Credit Kennedy Muff with a block assist as well. Mary Wise said, we know it's going to take a special person to come here and realistically play behind Alexis Stuckey. You know, who is going to want to come and have that experience? Maybe someone who wanted to coach in the future and Kennedy Muff wanted to come in. She said, my goal is to be the most um, competitive B-side setter you've <laughs> ever had. And never did she realize that she would be in this situation. Evans answers for Georgia. Well, Stuckey gives Florida so much offense when she's in that setter position because she will dump, she will attack. That was the 11th attack a moment ago from Muff and her first kill. And Evan's certainly no stranger to successful attacks. All SEC performer, third team All-American last year. Georgia out in front by three here in this opening set. A nice save by Muff. Kept it off the net. Here's Fitzpatrick, another off speed. Brower runs it down. Evans out of the back row. Fitzpatrick, got hands. And another kill for A.C. Fitzpatrick. But it was really the first swing from A.C. Fitzpatrick that set that up because the swing was not there early. She forced Georgia out of system, and her team got another opportunity. Now they're in system, and she can take a real rip at the ball. So great job extending the rally there by A.C. Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick is coming off a 15-kill performance against Auburn. She had four straight double-digit kills, and Okamore is in now. She and Fitzpatrick combined for the block. Okamore coming off of a season high seven blocks at Auburn. She is so good from side to side, gets the hands over fast, seals the net, and AC Fitzpatrick in on that as well. Gators within one. Georgia has led the entire set, and an ace by Dixon. 
That is her 10th of the season as uh, the active winningest coach in the country looks on happy. So are these fans. Ford has won nine of the last 11 points to tie the score. Another good serve. Haugen dug out by Adams and uh, going to get her for Another net violation. Ah, yeah, it wasn't. I was that in it for the double. That was against Nady Okamore, and wow, that's unfortunate because a huge hole in the block, and it looked like open court on this swing from the outside from Estelle Haugen, but Trinity Adams oh. steps in with a huge dig, and you see it's Nady Okamore actually as she's landing. So Georgia retakes the lead as a result of that. Anna Julia Bleeker coming in to serve. Redshirted last year, uh, her mom played volleyball here in the Sunshine State at USF. Serves Adams, Muff, Okamore tips it over. And somehow Georgia scored off that, so see Sophie Fisher. That, that not, is not, that's not gonna be in the summer camp highlight no, reel. That, that is not by design, <laughs> but sometimes you just have to find a way. That's called, yeah. it, gotta win the ugly points as well. Fisher still without a hitting error. That was her third swing. Muff waits on it, sets Fitzpatrick. Evans back row attack, tools the block, point Georgia. Looks like Nady Okamore actually up a little early to block that back row attack. Florida in their own gym runs a very fast back row attack and that ball hung in the air a little for Casey Evans. Evans and Fisher both with three kills. Another serve coming from Bleeker. Bleeker with her back to the student section. Good receive by McKissick. Okamore off the slide. Back row, Martin. How about that creativity? Whoa! Are you kidding me? Court vision and communication amongst the Gators as they let Kennedy Martin know three blockers up. When you've got three blockers up, there's a whole lot of court for the defense to cover. Kennedy Martin takes advantage of the open corner. Just a freshman, Kennedy Martin. Muff serving, Muff served at match point against Auburn the other night when Martin got the kill to win the match. Fitzpatrick, off hands and it goes down, point Florida. AC Fitzpatrick picking up where she left off against Auburn. She has found a stride. And you have to credit Florida's secondary setting right now. At a system, their backcourt players are putting a really nice hittable ball up. It's a good serving run here by Kennedy Muff. Brower with the set. Fisher blocked by Fitzpatrick, kept alive. Here's Haugen going back into the block. Harper. Looking for the touch, not gonna get it, Point Gators. That first big swing out of the middle from Sophie Fisher of Georgia. I just like the way she attacks that high ball out of the middle, goes and gets it. Tom Black, the SEC Coach of the Year, last year taking this program to the NCAA Tournament and Muff finally off the service line now. This has been a, a set of runs here between these two. Muff uh, from Wisconsin, grew up a, a Badger fan. What a moment it was for her to come in during that match last weekend. Here's Bailey Cox. Bailey has already been on Sports Center this year with a dive, diving dig at home and uh, gets an ace. It almost takes my partner out. Good job, Missy. Great effort on the part of AC Fitzpatrick. Tries to make a play on that one, just ran out of room. Cox getting her serving instruction. She uh, had an excellent serving practice today. I can tell you that, watching them go through serving drills. She was always one of the winners. Fitzpatrick puts it down, and uh, it is going to be Georgia's point. Well, this is a rotation where Clara Brower is in the front row for Georgia, a smaller setter, and she blocks for these three rotations. So that's a really nice matchup, and AC Fitzpatrick knows it. She knows she has that smaller blocker down the line. She tries to go for it. Beautiful swing, but just wide. Just missed it. Brower's 5-9. Martin pushes it over. Nice diving dig by Cox. Point Florida.
I'll tell you, I watch A.C. Fitzpatrick, Missy. I know Florida doesn't have a beach team, but I, I think she'd be a star on the beach as oh, well. Oh, I, I totally agree. This particular edition of the Gators features two left sides who don't play in six rotations. That's a little rare for a Mary Wise team, and yet with all they're dealing with this year, I think that's really going to play to their favor because, wow. Come in. Wow, the drop on that serve. It looked like it was headed long, and the bottom fell out. This is such a nice ball from Emily Canaan. Yeah, Cox was letting it go, thought it was going to be way out. It's one of the things Canaan does best is serve. That was her seventh ace of the season. Another good one. Haugen out on the pin, dug up by McKissick. Brower with the back set. And another kill off the right side by Fisher. And she goes off hands, and Georgia maintains the lead. Fisher finishes it, but we're getting a look at why Coach Black described Haugen as such an improved player for yeah. this team. That first rip from her is a really fast tempo ball, and she is speedy in her approach. Haugen playing a much larger role this season as she progresses. Muff, quick set, and finished by Okamore. Florida like many teams, very heavy offense from the pins. So anything they can pick up out of the middle really helps the effort. Great ball there from Kennedy Muff to Nady Okamore. Georgia still in front, but feeling the heat from the Gators taking a timeout as Georgia leads 18 to 17. Georgia has been off a week, and sometimes you can be a little rusty, especially early in the season when you had that, have that one week off. So I was interested to see how they would play coming in to Florida after having the week off. Yeah, that's a good point. I do think sometimes the team can feel rusty. Coach Black seemed to like the opportunity to have a week of consistent training. Sometimes when you get into a, one, a Wednesday midweek and then a weekend match, you feel like it breaks up your training opportunities. So I think he was happy to have that time off. They've been able to sit back and watch SEC volleyball that started on Wednesday night and then on Friday night. This is their opening SEC match. Florida has already been on the road for an SEC match. Florida won at Auburn and Florida today was named the number three seed if the NCAA tournament were to start today. The first reveal was uh, put forth during the Kentucky Tennessee match, and so if the tournament started today, Messi, these would be our top 10 seeds. Of course, the top 16 seeds would host first and second rounds. Yeah, so fun to see a Washington State at 12 and 1. They're emerging this season as a real powerhouse. Oregon, a fun team to watch with how quickly they play. BYU, great Big 12 weekend for them as they start things off in their conference with wins over Houston. And Baylor as well. Really nice start for them to Big 12 play. Well, if they had done a top 16, it would be interested to see. I'd be interested to see if Tennessee sneaks into that top 16 because Tennessee sweeping Kentucky today. Uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, Auburn, Arkansas all in the top 25. Texas A&M receiving votes. They'll be here on Wednesday. And a good serve by McKissick right out of the timeout and we are tied at 18. It looked like Florida had a mountain to climb yeah. at the beginning of this first set. Georgia just came out on fire. I mean, regardless of who you're pulling for, you have to admire this Gator team, just how hard they are working to figure it out after losing Stuckey. And three points certainly are a valuable commodity. Two straight aces from McKissick. Kanan and now McKissick, both with drop balls at the <laughs> end line. Florida with the lead. Georgia's been leading the entire set, and it's a short-lived lead as Evans sides out for the dogs. Great choice there by Brower as she's able to hold Florida's middle blocker, who shadows Sophie Fisher. It's such a great offensive weapon. That opens things up at the pins for Casey Evans, who just has one blocker. And for her, that's gonna be that's gonna be a blast party. Fisher, a very good serving middle. And uh, Muff went over the net to get that double contact on Florida. So uh, 
Another excellent serve by Fisher. This is another big adjustment for Florida. With a taller setter in Alexis Stuckey, they were taught to pass tight to the net, where she could jump set and go up and get it, try to hold the blocker. Now their passers are being asked to keep the ball off the net a little for a smaller setter. So it's one of the many adjustments this team is having to make. Not many people can stop that. Kennedy Martin crushes it from the right side. That, to me, is going to be the area where this team has the most room for improvement, the Kennedy to Kennedy connection, because if you think about the fact Kennedy Martin plays in all six rotations, she spent all of her training time, time on the A side with Alexis Stuckey. The outside hitters only play across the front row, so they have spent time with both setters. Yeah, that is such a good point, and they are working so hard to overcome that. That's a step in the right direction. The Kennedy connection, Kennedy Muff, Kennedy Martin. It's a good sign for Florida if they're making that connection out of the back row. It's a difficult set. The way this set started, if Florida could win this first set, that would be a, a major accomplishment here to settle them down. And another ace. Florida is serving so well here in this first set. That is ace number five here in the set. After that subpar serving performance at Auburn, yeah. the Gators have responded. And Georgia is one of the best serving teams in the conference. Georgia has won six of their last seven matches, but Kennedy Martin doing it everywhere. Three kills, Inter aces. Yeah, interesting, it's Georgia who has two of the top servers in the conference. Casey Evans sits at third, Clara Brower at ninth. Florida does not have a single player in the top 10 in the conference in aces. So very interesting to see this, this serving performance, as you would expect, on their home court. So often teams much more comfortable serving on their home court. And Florida looking that way today. Well, you know me coming from the tennis world. I love aces. Let's take a look <laughs> at some of these. And the good news for Florida, it's coming from many different players. It's Canaan. It's Ellie McKissick. It is a variety of Gators going back to the service line. They're not just serving difficult balls. We're talking aces. Kennedy Martin, the freshman, another way for her to score points in the league as she tries to reclaim that number one spot in the league as the best point scorer, who actually that spot was just taken over by Sophie Fisher of Georgia right now. Four players have accounted for the five Florida aces. Five free points in a set at this level is huge. And right now, Florida up 22-20. Remember, if you're new to volleyball, we're going to 25 win by two here in this opening set. As Mary Wise and Dave Boos look on here, hoping Kennedy Martin can keep it going. Martin goes cross court with that serve. Brower puts it up for Evans. Evans powers through. Joust at the net, and Muff wins the joust. And the way her teammates celebrate for <laughs> her. She has been thrust into <laughs> such an important role, and you can see her teammates just thrilled for the success she's having. Yeah, it has uh, been delightful to see how this team is trying to lift her up and prove to her that she belongs out here and can lead this team. Florida up 23-20. Georgia trying to avoid going down set point. Canan with a diving dig. That's got to go over, and it's not. Good hustle by the dogs to keep Florida from set point. Brower will go back to serve. Brower leads the team in aces. You talked about it a, a moment ago, one of the best in the conference, 18 this year. She and Casey Evans both have 18 for Georgia. Serves Canan. Good save by Muff. Nice block by the dogs. That's going to be tight. Evans rolls it over. Muff. Setting Martin out of the back row. Set point, Florida. Sam, even just two days ago, that back row connection was not there for Kennedy to Kennedy. They didn't have the timing. And Mary Wise has said it's like we're in preseason all over again. We are a little behind some of the teams right now because we don't have our timing, but we're going to get better day by day. Adams will serve at set point. Again, Georgia led the majority of this set. 
Out of the middle, attacked by Harper. Dug up by Florida. Evans into the block, off the block. Point Bulldogs, it's still set point Florida. The heavy swing of Casey Evans keeps Georgia alive. Now that's exactly who Georgia wants to be swinging. Evans with five kills here in this opening set. Leads all players, still set point Florida. Fans on their feet. Muff to Dixon. Dixon is blocked, but out of bounds. Florida comes from behind to win the opening set. Well, that'll make Alexis Stuckey happy, and uh, these fans always fired up. It was Florida coming from behind to close out the opening set as the third-ranked Gainers looking to take a two sets to one lead against the dogs. The chaos is coming, Guardian. I dare you to defy it. <laughs> Your first home sees a lot of firsts. From first loves to first steps. And with the Home Depot, you'll find the confidence to create the first place you call your own. The Home Depot. How doers get more done. Florida closed the set on 11 to 5 run, and a lot of it was because of Kennedy Martin. Martin comes out into no one's surprise, leads the Gators, averaging her four kills per set. The good news for Florida, though, it's not just happening from the front row. She's found that rhythm with Kennedy Muff out of the back row. You see there, Georgia actually outkills Florida, but in combined blocks and aces, Florida plus six. So they find other ways to score points. Yeah, the ace is a big difference maker in that opening set. So Florida continues to try to find its groove and claims the opening set here at home on Wednesday. They will be taking on Texas A&M for Georgia. Man, Georgia has a tough opening start to its SEC play, uh, playing Florida, Kentucky, and Auburn. Those three matches, three in a row. So the Bulldogs hoping to steal one tonight here in Gainesville. But it's Florida with the upper hand after a set in this three out of five set match. Luckily for Georgia, they will get to host Kentucky before they have to go on the road to Auburn, which proved to be a really difficult place to play wow. as we continue to see attendance across the nation and excitement for this sport grow. It has been a record breaking season. Yeah, last weekend against Wisconsin, the largest crowd ever to watch an SEC regular season match was right here in the O'Connell Center, 10,323. And we're underway here in the second set. Muff with the set to Okamore. Goes over the block. Nice save by Bleeker. And then Fisher hits into the block and scores. Fisher has the ability to carry a really large offensive load. I think if you're Georgia, you're looking for as many balls to the middle as possible here while Sophie Fisher's in the front row. And Coach Black actually told us that is one of Clara Brower's strong suits, her ability to set the middle even out of system. Oh, Fisher 6'5". Had an incredible weekend last weekend at Georgia Tech in that tournament. Brower back set. Out. Harper unable to find the inline. Point Florida. Really nice set against the flow for Clara Brower. Realize this Georgia team over the first two weeks of the season had players in and out of the lineup. Injury, illness. Tori Harper was actually asked to play on the left side in one of those weekends of play. She naturally plays on the right. So they've got some pieces of the puzzle that are, are just settling in as well as we begin SEC play. Kanan had an ace earlier. Here's her first serve here in the second set. That was a good one. Evans thought about letting it go, wisely kept it alive right side martin dug up by brower sent to haugen mckissick jumping in front of canan victoria
Prower with the one-handed set. However, that is going to be a, a, a lift on Fisher, and the point will be given to Florida. Sophie Fisher making the argument that she was on top of the ball. This is really difficult because this ha is a point of emphasis this season for officials to make the throw call. I, I was impressed by the set that mm -hmm. Brower was able to even get a ball up there for. Brower again, Haugen, Canan with a good dig. Tight to the net, Victoria. Oh, how about that dive by Brower? Harper and Harper hits it out and the Gators up 3-1 here to start the second. Both teams with great defensive effort across the backcourt, keeping balls alive. All you would expect from a rivalry matchup like this one. Kanan still back there serving. Uh, she is the heir apparent to wear that Libro jersey one day for Florida after McKissick graduates. Oh, Fisher crushes that one out of the middle. No denying her there. That's what Sophie Fisher brings to the lineup. Out of the middle, it's just a high ball. And she has such great length. You see the cut there, the sharp angle, beautifully played. Fisher, former South Carolina player of the year in high school, along with Kennedy Martin for Florida. A couple of South Carolina's finest playing against each other tonight. Here's Victoria. Haugen keeps it alive over to Brower. Now back over to Fisher. She got it on the way down, but it worked. Sophie Fisher with the touch on that block and then how hard she worked in transition to get off the net and take her approach behind the setter. She's putting in miles of work that you just don't realize behind the scenes. She's hitting 500, seven kills off 12 attacks, only one error. And the serve put in play that time by Cox. Martin crushes it, side out Florida. Based on where Kennedy Muff was on the floor, everyone knew the only set she had there was to the right antenna. Everyone knew that's where she's going. The Georgia block heads that way, and they still can't stop her. Yeah, it's just been amazing watching the impact she's had as a freshman. Doesn't matter who the opponent is. Ace, another one. As McKissick is red hot behind the service line. Ellie McKissick feeling it here in the exact tech arena. Third ace for McKissick. <laughs> McKissick and getting close to 100 aces for her career. Do you know how many aces you had in your career, Missy? Oh, goodness. Not 100, I'm going to say. But I, had, I really have no idea. I'm going to tell you, you had 103. <laughs> really? Yes, you did. Well, thank so, I feel better about in myself. In fact, she's chasing you for 21st <laughs> place all time. Come on. Okay. So I don't think uh, you're going to be able to speak the rest of the night. You're still trying <laughs> to figure stunned. that out, Missy. I'm actually stunned. <laughs> Haugen serving. Good right. serve. Yes. Martin crushes it again. That is just too much power. Downing unable to dig it up. Love Downing's effort, though. She got right in front of that and tried. Yeah, it was great footwork on the part of Kimmy Martin to line herself up and give herself a really nice line swing there. Martin now with six kills. Florida up six to five. It's too tight to the net. Easy overpass put away for Florida. Victoria gets credit for it. I mentioned earlier that these outside hitters for Florida are unique in a Mary Wise offense and that they only play these three rotations across the front row. And I do think that they're both really nice left side blockers. When you think about the emphasis that they put on the front court in practice, it pays off. Yeah, that's a great point. See it time and time again over there. Muff setting Martin. Martin comes off the back line and gets another kill this time with a little creativity, some off speed. Really using the corners of the court so well. Those pocket shots dropping right now for Kennedy Martin. Yeah, I am struck by just the variety of shot that she has as a freshman. Yeah. It's not just power. Yeah, that's the key, as you said, as a freshman, for her to understand all those shots. 
Well, she is a scouting nightmare. <laughs> so is Fisher, who puts it down from the right side. The range and the versatility of Sophie Fisher, it's a thing of beauty. You know, whether it's a high ball at the pin, out of the middle, fast, um, the tempo sets, and there you see her ability to go sharp angle. The state of South Carolina is producing a lot of fantastic players. Remember Thayer Hall, the yes. Gator great, was from South Carolina. And Evans does not get that muff, wins another joust as Evans comes over the net there. Watch this. I feel like Muff fights her off just long enough to force her into the net. She has to keep pushing as the ball is coming down. And so while she wins the power struggle, Kennedy Muff will get the point. Yeah, that was, that was funny. Evans gave her a little look, but lost the, lost the point. Adams serving. And Adams with the service here. Adams typically one of the better servers for Florida. 13 aces this year. Played uh, incredibly well defensively against Wisconsin last week with a career-high 17 digs. Brower back to serve for Georgia. Georgia trailing by two and down a set to Florida. Florida the third-ranked team in the country. Dixon powers through the block. What a pass by Ellie McKissick. That was a nice serve from Georgia. We've seen the aces from Florida. Georgia doing a nice job from the service line, but that Florida pass really holding up. I mean, beautiful diving pass by Ellie McKissick. And there you see again that Anna Dixon offense from the right side. Second kill for Dixon and now a service error. Georgia swept the Gators here last year, but again, a, a lot of the personnel not playing this year from that match. Mary Wise in her 33rd season, the longest tenured head coach at Florida and says, uh, this is one of her favorite teams. Just absolutely loves the chemistry of this team. And for them to even be as competitive as they are after immediately losing Stuckey, it, it speaks to the chemistry mm -hmm. of the Florida team, I think. Now, they're fantastic with or without her, but that's such an emotional blow losing Stuckey for the season. Best news we got, though, was that she still can apply for a medical hardship at the end of the year and have three more years as a Gator. ACLs are not career-ending injuries like they used to be. Can come back even stronger now. Gators up one. Muff with the set. And it is put down by Okamore. And when they find the connection there, Okamore just lethal on this slide. This is a play that Florida is saying, yes, please, more of that. Now, Okamore is one of those intangible players for Florida. Haugen. Overpass. That was Gucci tried to put it away. The Gators keep it alive. Here's Fitzpatrick. Targets downing. Evans into the net, point Florida. That set higher than Evans was expecting. Evans had started her approach, expecting a little faster set. Out of system, I think Brower had chosen to hang it a little higher. And that's why you see Casey Evans on her way down there as she takes a swing at that ball. Muff goes line. There's Haugen. Into the block and powers through it. Got it right through the arms of Okamore for the kill. And she's right in front of us right now with her approach. So yeah. we had a front row seats for that. And boy, is she a high flyer. Yeah, Haugen, huge vertical. Her dad was a hockey player. Mom ran track at Minnesota State. Bleeker with the serve. That's a good serve. Adams sends it back toward the net. Fitzpatrick bumps it over. Brower back set and stuffed by Okamore for the Gator point. Casey Fitzpatrick fired up after that block. I think she must have gotten a large piece of that <laughs> one as well. I'll tell you, you mentioned that though, Sam, what a great serve by Anna Julia Bleeker. Both of these teams are really good from the service line right now. It, it was interesting today, Georgia, coming in and just practicing serving. You know, typically in volleyball, they have a serve and pass practice the day of a match. But for Georgia, it was all about emphasizing the serve today. Brower to Haugen. 
Another high flying attack by Haugen. Wow. Skywalker. Kennedy Martin trying to reach out to the line there. And as she's moving those hands, they become a target for an attacker. You got to get the hands over fast and hold them still. Cox in to serve. Into the net. Going for a little bit of a short serve today. The Georgia worked on serving into different zones based on where Florida was positioned. How about these Gator fans? A volleyball is a hot ticket all over the country right now. It doesn't matter where you are. McKissick has been one of the best servers in this match tonight. Brower saves it. Haugen again. They keep feeding her. Why not? Three straight kills for Haugen. Really nice jump set at the net there by Clara Brower. She played in a 6-2 last year with Alexa Fortin, and so she's also uh, in, a, in a role now where, as Coach said, it's mentally exhausting. She's constantly making decisions you know, in all six rotations. She's Alexa Fortin Godey now. She's I did married. know that. Yeah, yeah Ryland Godey, also a transfer from Georgia to Mississippi State, a tight end on their football team. That's right. So they were a package deal for the Mississippi State football and volleyball program. We digress. <laughs> <laughs> it's good memory, though, Missy. You're not just a serving expert. Well, I happen to have some inside <laughs> knowledge of the Mississippi State yeah, football team. Yeah, that's right, you do. <laughs> uh, into the net was Fisher, Point Florida. It looks like they're calling her over the net over here the net. because You're I right. see Sophie Fisher looking to the up oh. official saying, I went straight up. So a timeout on the floor, Florida up a set, clinging to a two-point lead here in the second. are born and every match is a spectacle a celebration like no other for the love of football for the love of la liga well we talked about this one earlier georgia has kentucky next and it is our sec network featured volleyball matchup this friday It'll be in Athens in the Ramsey Student Center. The Cats have beaten the dogs the last five matches, but coverage will begin at 7 Eastern. And uh, Kentucky swept today by Tennessee will be desperate for a win Friday night against Georgia, just like Georgia is tonight here on Florida's home court. Interesting, Missy. I want to know as a former player, what do you, if this is a big deal, Georgia is out killing Florida in this match. 21 kills to 17, but yet Florida has the lead. So if you're Georgia, does that bother you? And how do you turn it around? I, I think it's a result of what Florida is doing at the service line. The fact that they're serving aces. And then I think that beginning stretch of set one where Florida just went about seven points without a kill is causing those numbers to look a little more skewed than it really is. Brower putting up the set for Evans. Georgia looking for a side out right away, and they get it. Casey Evans with another kill. She's up to seven now. And quite honestly, Florida really just hoping to contain Casey Evans. You're not going to stop her, but can you contain her and allow her not to go off for a career match like she did here a year ago? Fisher, again, one of the better serving middles in the conference. Dixon. Tools the block point Gators. Florida in this set is hitting over 400 
And leading by two now. And Anna Dixon really being asked to play two separate positions yeah. at the same time. Block all the way across the net from antenna to antenna, and then work really hard to get off the net and be prepared to attack from the right pin. And boy, uh, she just makes it, it look so doable. And what a b asset she's been coming in from Missouri, volunteering to play middle and gives them so much versatility in Stucky's absence. There's a kill out of the middle, speaking to the middles by Gooch, her first. A freshman from Dallas, a first team All-American coming into this Georgia program. And Georgia, without Mackenzie Norris so far this year, who played in the middle for them a season ago, now without Caitlin Fournier, who's spent some time in the middle for them, CeCe Gooch, coach said, has been such a pleasant surprise as a freshman. Comes from a long line of athletes in her family. Her dad and grandfather played football at Texas. There's an ace. And a long celebration there by Brower, trying to get this team fired up. And for Georgia, make it three aces now to three errors, a really good ratio. For Florida, six aces to five errors, a little bit even better ratio. But both teams, very good from the service line. Good serve from Brower, good receive from Adams. Oh, boy, Dixon had too much time. You're not going to stop that. Her approach looks as though she's going to go angle. And the location of the set, it appears as though that's the only shot available. But look at her ability to cut her wrist down yeah. the line. Just really elite shot by Anna Dixon. You could really see it on that replay. That was a good job. 17-16, Florida up by one into the match for the first time. Emerson Hoyle, who just served that. That's out, so Hoyle will get another serve. Hoyle is a sophomore from Arden, North Carolina. I've been waiting to get this in. Well, I'm going to have to wait because there's a timeout. Timeout by Georgia as uh, Hoyle goes over to the bench. I, I can tell it now. Okay, we get these questionnaires, Missy, where players answer silly questions. And Hoyle's question that she was asked is, what are three things you would bring to a deserted island? Okay. And I just loved her practicality. She said, I'd bring a plane, a pilot, and a blanket. <laughs> That's I mean, a smart girl. You could right go there. a lot of, you know, a lot of people would say, but she's very practical. She's going to get off that deserted island first. <laughs> I love it. She was a uh, first team high school All American out of the state of North Carolina. And so far this season has been inserted in to serve. Uh, Florida. Unlike a lot of programs, we were talking about this earlier, Missy, they have players that have been willing to wait their turn mm. to step up. In today's era of the transfer portal, you don't see that a lot. If a player comes in and they're not playing right away, many times they will leave. But the Gators have a few players that have waited around, and now they're getting that playing time. I mean, Nady Okamore has really emerged here over the last several weeks as a key for Florida with what she's doing at the net, blocking balls, touching so many balls, allowing them to play defense behind her. You see number six there in white. Next to her, zero in white, A.C. Fitzpatrick, who actually transferred to Florida last season but saw very limited playing time, had an ankle injury early last year that sort of limited her. Um, start of this season, didn't know if she would be outside on the pin or not. And what a month she is having. I mean, she has just put Florida on her back at times. Yeah, four straight double-digit kill matches for Fitzpatrick. As Florida leads 18-16, Hoyle will be back on the service line, not trying to figure out how to get off a deserted island and how to <laughs> stay on the service line right now. And a little too much behind that one as it goes out, and Georgia climbs to within one. Evans will be serving for Georgia, and uh, she's getting some service instructions from the coaching staff, actually changed positions to deliver this serve. Went line to Fitzpatrick. Off the slide, was there a touch? No, point Georgia. A little delayed call there, so good serve by Evans. And we're tied at 18. Florida's going to take a timeout now as uh, things are getting tense here in the second set. We were tied at three. We were tied at six. Now we're tied at 18. And it gives me a chance to remind you that read and react 
is on tomorrow night at 7 Eastern right here on the SEC Network. They will be taking a look back at college football's plays, players, and games from this weekend. Gators uh, had a game here last night against Charlotte. Florida, 9-1. And 1-0 and, uh, and in the SEC play after the dramatic come from behind win against Auburn. In fact, five of their wins have been from behind, where they've been and, down at least a set. And their last three matches have been five setters. Not to jinx us here, but <laughs> Florida has been going the distance on the regular. Casey Evans, uh, again, getting some more service instructions from Aaron Benning. Coach Benning, uh, in his seventh season, he's been with Tom Black ever since Tom came to Georgia, and uh, he shoulders the load of coaching serving and what a serving coach he is because this is one of the better serving teams you're going to see typically. So uh, this brain trust has taken Georgia back to the NCAA tournament, hoping to get back there again this year. And they've got quite a resume here early. Evans again serves Fitzpatrick. Same spot as her last serve. Fitzpatrick transitioning, swings. Nice dig by Downing. Haugen dug up by Martin. Fitzpatrick over the block. Good save by Haugen. Evans back row. Adams sends it out to Fitzpatrick. Blocked. Point Georgia. It's a great point by the Bulldogs. Just transitioning from defense to offense. So disciplined. Picking up their tips. Mm. And then eventually it is the block. Yeah, and that was Krista Blakely getting most of that who gave us the scouting report before the match. End of the match on the front row. Service error by Evans. And we're tied at 19. Again, going to 25, win by two. It's the fourth service error by Georgia. They have three aces, Muff, on the line for Florida. Good serve. Saved by Blakely. Out of bounds. Ace by Muff. And right now, the Florida servers just have Georgia guessing. It feels like some of these balls are going to float long, but so many of them have dropped at the inline that Georgia making some late decisions to try to pass balls. Muff again serving at Downing. Haugen behind the 10-foot line. McKissick with the dig, and it goes over. Haugen got the touch. Point Georgia. Great composure on the part of Haugen, who you really thought that first swing was going to be yeah. a kill. Ellen McKissick steals it from <laughs> her, but she gets off the net and keeps working. And McKissick uh, getting very close to being sixth all-time in digs for Florida. She's got four digs right now. She's tied right now. Looking to break that tie to go into six all by herself. Fisher with the block. And Georgia with the one-point lead here, deep in the second set, trying to tie this match. Because of the pass there, that became a pretty predictable set. And when Sophie Fisher knows where it's going, she is an excellent blocker. Georgia right now was serving down the line at A.C. Fitzpatrick. Well, no, they don't. Go to McKissick this time. Here's Fitzpatrick on the attack. And sides out for Florida. We're tied at 21. Serving that line with success. I'm actually surprised to see them go away from it. Florida, again, we, we touched on a moment ago, no stranger to close matches. They have been in so many battles that will serve them well as Canaan on the service line now. Canaan with an ace earlier in the match. Goes corner, back it. Downing, Fisher, too much power. Oh. She gets beyond that three meter line and just takes a monster approach and goes up and gets it out of the middle. Often just one blocker up. And that is the case here. Well, Kennedy Martin, no, does a good job of closing and still Sophie Fisher finds her way around that block. Great players make things look easy. Mm -hmm. And I would put Fisher in that category. She just makes that look effortless. Yeah. Cox with the serve. Muff puts up the set. Victoria is blocked, saved by Canaan. Good defense. 
Brower to Haugen. McKissick with another dig. Martin goes over the block. Haugen gonna try again, and this time she gets the kill. Haugen getting better and better as this match goes on. Georgia celebrating. They are two points from tying this match. Florida taking a timeout to slow that down, if not deny it. And this is off of a back set from their libero. She has to take the ball over her shoulder. That is a really huh. difficult shot to turn that down the line by Estelle Haugen. So Ellie McKissick now puts herself further and further up the all-time list in digs in Florida history, up to sixth all-time now. But uh, not at all concerned about anything but trying to win this set right now. Florida just stole one from Georgia, really, in set one with that big lead that the Bulldogs had. And then we come back in set two, and it feels like Florida leads most of set two until those final five points, and it's Georgia racing toward the finish line right now. Georgia has 14 kills this set to 10 for Florida. Florida's hitting percentage has come down to from over 400 to 231, while Georgia's has gone up to 226 right now. But again, uh, anyone set here, we're going to 25, win by two. Florida won the first set. Sam, you mentioned the offensive comparison earlier. And again, in this set, it's Florida with 10 kills to Georgia's 14. So still Georgia producing more offense than the Gators right now. Sophie, Sophie Fisher has been mm -hmm. a problem that Florida's not been able to solve so far. Fisher now with nine kills. And it will be Bailey Cox serving. Georgia up two, deep in the second. Muff with the set. Victoria sides out for Florida. A perfect pass creates a nightmare for the Georgia blockers because that's basically a double quick. Sophia Victoria hitting such a fast ball at the pin. Nady Okamore up in front of the setter as well. And you just don't know who's going to get it. 17 assists for Muff. McKissick, McKissick is exactly who they want to serve. She's had a very good night serving. Brower setting Haugen, and Haugen puts it down. Georgia arrives at set point for the first time tonight. Estelle Haugen having a coming out party right now, putting the SEC on notice. <laughs> she and Clara Brower have found a really nice rhythm, and the speed of her attack is impressive. No errors from Haugen, 18 swings, eight kills. Set point Bulldogs. Muff. Joust at the net, point Georgia, it's over. So we are tied at a set apiece here in Gainesville. Georgia, which led for most of the first set and lost, comes from behind and wins set number two. We're tied at a set apiece. It's a two out of three set match from here on out. We don't know any first responders who only give 90%. Or farmers, the workers who build our towns, roads, infrastructure. They don't stop at halfway. And good luck finding a small business owner who's happy with an 80% effort. That's why they use Ford trucks. Ford F-Series, 100% assembled in America. Because we're all in on America. So gentle. The Bulldogs battle from behind to tie things up at one apiece here in Gainesville. Thanks to the play of sophomore Estelle Haugen, who is having herself a night eight kills without a single error. She's hitting 444 from the left pin. That is a monster number. Big swings from Estelle Haugen. And that is why right now Georgia has the offensive edge against the Gators. Plus five in the kills category. Florida block getting it done though with seven thus far in the match.
And they've also been really good from the service line, keeping themselves in this one. But Florida's going to have to find a little better offensive rhythm in this third set. Georgia only has four players with the kill, but three of them have at least seven, whereas Florida's spread the kills out a lot more, but just not as many. Mm -hmm. So there are three players getting it done in terms of kills for Georgia. That would be Fisher, Haugen, and Evans. So we are deadlocked at a set apiece here in Gainesville. Muff to serve, first point of the third set. Brower with the set to Fisher, and again, Fisher just keeps pouring it on. That's her 10th kill. Swinging high, deep corners. Sophie Fisher. Now Fisher has been unstoppable so far. Bailey Cox back in to serve, gets her instructions from Aaron Benning, the assistant coach that calls out the serves. Targets McKissick, Muff back to Okamore. And the kill from Okamore off the slide on the right side. Probably my favorite volleyball play, the slide. And when it's yeah. executed well, it is so pretty and so hard to stop. Canan in to serve now. Just a sophomore. It's quiet in here when the Gators serve. Brower, blocked, Okamore. And that will go down as Estelle Haugen's first error on this match, and it comes by way of just an elite play from Florida. Sometimes I don't like the fact that a elite block actually counts against an attacker yeah, as an error. I agree. Canan serving, Florida up 2-1 here, early third set, match tied at a set apiece. Haugen with the off speed, and it worked. Closed her fist with that attack. Florida with about three players there in position to make a play on that ball, just not enough communication. Haugen with the jump serve at McKissick. Victoria had a lot of time, used the touch. And speaking of touch, Fisher puts it down. He said the ball went down. McKissick unable to get underneath it. Point Georgia. And so for Sophie Fisher, as she has so much success in the middle, it forces Florida to draw more blockers in. They've got to find a way to defend her. As soon as the blockers start to come in and put up the triple block, now you've got open court to defend. And so what does Sophie Fisher do? She uses that court. Muff back to Victoria. Haugen keeps it alive. There's Fisher on the right side. Victoria powers through it. Secondary setting by Ellie McKissick. She gets there early, gets herself set. The bump back over her back. Look at this. But it just hangs it right up in the window. It's very important for her to give those outside hitters a good swing in those out-of-system situations. McKissick on the service line. We're tied at three. Cox takes the serve, here's Evans, and Canan unable to get it. That was perfectly placed by Casey Evans. Casey Evans seeing those deep corners that he said moments ago, Sophie Fisher swinging high deep corners. Lots of court to be found there, and Casey Evans finds it as well. Fisher has had a good night serving as well. Canan with the serve receive, Martin. Tools the block, point Florida. And they finally get it out to Martin. Feels like she's gone quiet a bit, yeah. doesn't it, Sam? Yeah. Martin, though, leads the Gators with eight kills. Brower, back set, and how about that? I did not see that coming. That was such a tight set. And it's the off speed, not short into the court, but just over the defenders. Wow, finds the perfect hole. Yeah, Gooch with an excellent play there. Short serve. Dixon kept alive by Evans. Evans gonna attack. 
They're looking for the touch, not going to get it. Point Florida. You know, it, it's interesting, Missy. Until now, we have not had a challenge. Yeah. And Tom Black is Into going to challenge whether set. that was. Very yeah. interesting. He's going to challenge whether that was a touch. I actually did a match the other night, Texas A&M, Mississippi State, where there were no challenges. So Georgia immediately said touch. The ball went way out. So does it hit the fingers of Kennedy Muff there, number 14 in white? Oh, yeah. I think it does. I think it might. The pointer finger of Kennedy Muff yeah. on the right hand. Yeah, it didn't yes. take him long. So a good challenge by Tom Black. He gets to keep Mary Wise. his challenge. Mary Wise just said to the players, did you? And Kennedy Muff shook her head, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but up until the call was made, she had stayed very quiet. So that gives Georgia now a two-point lead. Both coaches with two challenges. You only lose a challenge if you lose the challenge. Victoria sides out right away for the Gators. And even Kennedy Muff doesn't know how that possibly worked. The ball is <laughs> shot at her off the pass. She just throws one up in the air. And this is why Mary Wise said she fell in love with Sophia Victoria. She fell in love with that arm swing. Uh, Victoria is a, a star junior player in Puerto Rico before coming to Florida. Brower pushes it to the net. And a kill out of the middle by Blakely. That's Blakely's first kill. The transfer from Eastern Michigan touches 10-6. I like the fact that they give her a swing out of the middle, her first big swing of the match. She doesn't have two blockers right in front of her. She has lots of court to work with. Really smart choice. Evans, good serve. But Muff found a way to get it over. Good dig by the Gaia, by the Bulldogs. And then Dixon with the defensive play. Scores for Florida. Here's the blocking movement of Anna Dixon, who realized has never played middle as a collegiate player until this year. It is just hard to believe. And it's a one-year thing for her. She mm -hmm. has uh, professional aspirations where she will play on the outside, but uh, she feels like it improves her overall game. There's Haugen again making her presence felt here in the third set. And Estelle Hagen, we've seen the success in system with the fast set, but that's not that's not a clean look for her. She has to come inside, two blockers waiting, and she's still finding ways to score points. Bulldogs with two players in double digits in terms of kills. Fisher and Haugen, Florida, has yet to put a player in double digits, but they've got it spread around a lot. Martin leads the Gators with eight. Fitzpatrick goes over the block with the tip and scores a point for Florida. I asked Mary Wise earlier, is there something technically that AC Fitzpatrick's doing that's allowing her to be so low error and so high production? And Mary Wise says she's just understanding what shots are available to her and what, where she can be successful, not trying to do things that she can't do, playing within herself. That's a sign of maturity in an mm -hmm. athlete when they understand what they do best and don't try to deviate from it. Blakely again dug up by McKissick. Here's Fitzpatrick. Popped up by Brower. Haugen goes over the block, but it's out of bounds. Point Florida. Barely out of bounds yeah. <laughs> for Estelle Haugen, who has just been near perfect. So we're tied. Eight apiece here in this pivotal third set. Match tied at a set apiece. Muff serving Downing. Haugen gives Florida a free ball. Florida a little out of system here. And just never could get in system off of that free ball. And it's a, basically a, a free point for Georgia. Absolutely it is. And some of that is, you know, I've seen it twice now for Florida. I realize new player in Kennedy Muff who has been asked to step in the shoes of Alexis Stuckey, their All-American setter who was injured. And twice now I've seen some traffic pattern issues mm. for Florida. Just you're playing next to <laughs> someone new. That's a good way to put it. Cox serving. Adams with the receive muff. Setting Fitzpatrick goes power, but the block is there. And Fisher continues to celebrate. She got all of that one. Big block by Fisher. 
Sophie Fisher likes that. I tell you, those middle blockers work so incredibly hard from side to side and oftentimes don't have numbers to show for it, so they deserve some celebration. Okamore off the slide this time, denied. She found success there earlier, but the Georgia block is a fortress right now. Eleven to eight, Georgia building some momentum here in the third set. Muff to Fitzpatrick, kept alive by Cox. And another kill from Halgen. Timeout, Florida. It is all going Georgia's way right now. So the Dogs on a 4-0 run, taking the lead 12-8 here in the third. Chaos is coming, Guardian. I dare you to defy it. Well, every Wednesday, Alyssa Lang and Takeo Spikes host Out of Pocket. They'll look back at the week that was in college football, look ahead at the coming weekend with head coaches, players, and other guests joining in on the fun coverage of the one hour show. Begins at 7 Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app here in Gainesville. The third ranked Gators being tested by the Bulldogs. This is an interesting rotation. Florida has all three attackers stacked on the left side. Kennedy Martin in the front row. I don't feel like this is a rotation where they should get stuck. And yet they're struggling here to get out of this one. Martin 18 and white. Fitzpatrick has to send this over for Georgia. Haugen blocked. And Florida needed that side out. That seems to be the theme where Florida has not been able to consistently kill balls. Their defense has come through big. Yeah, it, it is a, a bit puzzling with the lethal power of Kennedy Martin. Martin's been stuck on eight kills for a while in this match. Yeah, I think they've got to find her. And then, of course, the timing of that connection with a new setter, oh, so important. And as Mary Wise said, it will take time. They are aware of that. Uh, Fisher is just on fire. She has been the one constant for Georgia tonight. Now up to 12 kills. They have three players in double digits right now. And as a defender, it'll just drive you crazy. It just seems that easy high ball up in the middle, and yet they execute it so well. And Sophie Fisher has so much room to swing. Setter keeping her off the net a little. Ace, Haugen unleashes on the serve. She is not known for her uh, acing ability this year. That's just her fifth of the season. But again, that's what Georgia worked on today exclusively in their practice slot, just serving. And Coach Black told us this is a player who they actually made some mechanical adjustments to her serve, and she was willing to become a little uncomfortable in order to make some changes, and they're paying off. Victoria sides out for the Gators. Sophia Victoria comes flying in on that left side. Dixon back in on the front line for Florida. But as you alluded to, Sam, uh, Kennedy Martin already in right front. So her trip across the front row in this coming to an end here. And I just don't think they've gotten much out of her offensively. Good serve from McKissick. Evans made an attack, but it was blocked by Martin. Here's Evans again. Goes line, diving dig by Canan. Victoria over the block. Cox dove, but to no avail. Point Florida. And if you remember earlier this set, they got Kanan in that deep back corner, and she was not going to let it happen again. A flying save from Kanan to extend things, and Sophia Victoria with the beautiful touch shot. Now Victoria's up to six kills. That is the second highest total for Florida tonight. McKissick back to serve. McKissick with three aces tonight. Fisher. Muff with the back set to Dixon, dug up by Haugen. Middle attack from Fisher, Canan digs it. 
Victoria. Hammers it. This is Ellie McKissick, a senior looking like a senior. Totally calls off the setter, clears everyone out. Look at her, clears them out. My ball and places it perfectly for Sophia Victoria. Three assists for Miss uh, McKissick out of the libero position. Georgia takes a timeout as Florida now within two. And uh, Missy, as you look at this Florida team, second match we've gotten to see them play without Stuckey for the entire match. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's going well? Do you think it's going to take a while? Are you surprised at what you've seen? What are just your overall impressions? Yes and yes. <laughs> I think it's going well, and I think it's going to take some time. You know, I think that um, they're on pace to get better and better, but I think Mary Wise actually worded it beautifully when she said, for us, it's like we're only at day four of training camp. You know, all these other teams have been working on timing issues and building rhythm throughout the course of the season, and here we are starting over again. And so while I think things are going well, I think the good news for Gator fans is there's still lots of room for improvement. It's interesting because at the start of the year, there was so much focus on the success Florida was having. And now there's a lot of focus on Florida to see how they're going to handle this dynamic without Stuckey. Yeah, it's a huge adjustment for this team. I was concerned about the passing line. I will say coming into this one, I felt like maybe they felt some pressure at Auburn, like they had to be a little bit perfect. And I feel like we've seen them today settle back in. That, to me, has been one of the strengths of this Gator team from years prior is that I felt that passing line had really turned a corner. It's a solid group now in Canaan, McKissick. And when you add to that Trinity Adams as well, they're playing like veterans, and this Florida team really needs that unit. Yeah, a lot of people saying that. Get better soon, Alexis. Uh, she's embraced nationally. So many uh, head coaches giving her well wishes as she just saw the sign <laughs> on the Jumbotron. But, uh, the win over Auburn was a big statement for Florida tonight. Georgia ready for the battle. And Fisher denied this time by Victoria defensively. And Sophia Victoria, I think, just happened to be in the right place at the right time. <laughs> she not? looked like she was about to release from the net. And then the back set, and she said, oh, wait a minute. Let me grab this. Well, McKissick has been so successful behind the service line for Florida. Georgia's lead is reduced to one. Evans attacks. Hits into the block, and it works. Florida could not make a play on it. Point dogs. Anna Dixon gets the slowdown that she needs, and then she can't find the ball right above her own head. That is so common. Any middle blocker has had that experience. Speaking of uh, middle blockers, pretty good one back to serve right now. Fisher yeah. has an ace tonight. This time wide on that serve. Man, she was going for it, though. And lots of tape on that left thumb, thumb of Sophie Fisher. We haven't mentioned that. It obviously doesn't impact her attacking or her serving, but with the look of that tape, a definite thumb injury, and she hasn't hurt her blocking at all so far. I, it hasn't hurt anything. Speaking of aces, another one for the Gators. This time, Kennedy Martin rifles the ace. That's her second. With Kennedy Martin's length, she's such a different server from some of the smaller servers of Florida where you get that float serve. Kennedy Martin coming down on the ball, coming down as it crosses the net. She is such a good point scorer. Fisher out of the back row, too much power for Canan to handle. And the Bulldogs get a much needed side out to stay in the lead. Sophie Fisher, they leave her in for that rotation right there just for her back row attack. And I asked Coach Black about passing. Do you feel like you're giving something up in passing? And he said, I'm playing the odds. I think it's worth it. And I think he's right. Uh, two of the best coaches in the business in this match, Tom Black and Mary Wise. Muff again winning the joust at the net. And we see a little signs of her being more offensive in this match. She's Missy. very aggressive as a setter. Realize she's coming from a Division II program, but she was the three-time Peach Belt Conference setter of the year. It's a player with a whole lot of game. Yeah, an elite player at that level. Evans tools the floor to block. Point Bulldogs. Casey Evans, one of the three players in double digits. 12 kills now for Evans. 
And in years past, there's been times where Georgia has been the Casey Evans show. Yeah. And you can only go so far on the shoulders of one player, but that is not the case right now. They're getting a healthy dose of offense from several players. That is going to be Georgia's point as net violation on Kennedy Muff. Evans going over and having a little discussion here with Aaron Benning about where she's going to serve. That is just out. I had no question where she was going. She was <laughs> staring down AC Fitzpatrick. I knew where it was headed. Uh, Evans will use that intimidation yeah, stare. You know, yeah. She, she uh, has quite the glare. Her feistiness certainly works in her favor. If she ever has children one day, that will work to her advantage. Yes. I can tell you that. Overpass cleaned up by Gooch. Gooch starting to make her presence felt on this team. Seven blocks last weekend against Georgia Tech. Talking to Tom Black over there on the bench. Bleeker back in to serve. Bleeker, a mechanical engineering major at Georgia. Muff attacks. The dump by Muff. Her second successful attack. And Mary Wise is saying right now, she wants to be the first to 20. She's saying we can't continue to play with them point for point. We got to make a move right now. Great decision by Kennedy Muff. The no look, and she does it as she's coming off the net, which is just so important. Stucky had 30 kills to the point in the season when she got injured, and now Muff has got five tonight. All five for the season have come tonight for Muff. In fact, it was just her 12th set played when we started this match. Muff, back set to Martin. She goes over the block, downing, nice dig. Muff will try again, other side, Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick finding hands. Love the way Trinity Adams and Ellie McKissick are just so steady on those free ball situations, stepping in, cleaning things up, making it very manageable for Kennedy Muff. Oh, that just hung on the net and came back on the floor at a side. And it is Georgia up 20 to 19 as a result in this best of five set match which is tied at a set apiece. Here we are again with Kennedy Martin in the front row as Kennedy Muff just served. Cox serving for Georgia. Good serve. Fitzpatrick can't make a play on it. It goes out of bounds and Georgia takes a two point lead. Curious to see here what Florida attempts to do with their attackers. Will they send Okamore behind? Do they possibly hang a high ball in the middle to Martin? All three attackers stacked to the left side. Adams takes the serve. Muff setting Fitzpatrick is over the block. Fisher and Fisher creates a kill. And Georgia's won three straight points to take a three point lead here deep in the third. Timeout, Florida. So the Bulldogs coming on strong here at the end of the third, prompting Florida to take a timeout. And uh, Sophie Fisher has just been unstoppable in this match. And they are so creative in finding ways to use her. As a middle attacker, she has 25 looks so far tonight. That is a huge number for a middle blocker. She's killed 14 of them, hitting 440. And you can see, even when the connection isn't there, she is so poised in the air, swinging deep corners, using the tip shot. What a great match from the senior Sophie Fisher. Yeah, five blocks and an ace as well. And Fisher and the Bulldogs trying to take a two sets to one lead here on the Gators home court. Florida beating Auburn on Friday night in five sets. 
This is the SEC opener for Georgia, second SEC match for Florida. Florida today was recognized by the NCAA selection committee in the top 10 reveal. Their first reveal is the number three seed in the tournament. And most of that built on the body of work they've established so far with wins over Penn State, Stanford, and Minnesota. Interesting, Sam, we mentioned Sophie Fisher with 25 attempts at this point mm. in the match. Anna Dixon, who's in a similar role for Florida, not quite as long attacking out of the middle, but she has nine attempts for you to get a feel for just how big that number is for Sophie Fisher. That is a point well made. Fisher, an elite middle co-offensive player of the week in the SEC. She's been player of the week five times during her career. Cox still serving for Georgia. See if Florida can side out after the timeout. Fitzpatrick hits into the block. Again, and this time Fitzpatrick successful and Florida closes the gap to within two. A little bit tighter set, looks like it could be trouble, but not for AC Fitzpatrick, does a great job knowing there's a smaller blocker down the line which allows her to go off those hands. Fitzpatrick rotates out seven kills. Canan in to serve. Downing makes a diving save. Fisher with the tip. Florida's block is there. Haugen, no touch. Oh, there was a touch. Point Georgia. And wow. we'll see if Mary Wise uses a challenge and, uh, or if one of her players admitted touching it. I think that's the case. The tip in yeah. the left front is a ball that only Ellie McKissick can pick up. That was amazing play by Ellie McKissick to steal that kill from Sophie Fisher. Georgia trying to get to set point. Not going to happen yet. 23-21. The first set was 25-22, so was the second set. Here comes Anna Dixon along with Sophia Victoria and Kendi Martin, one of Florida's best front lines. Can they take advantage of it? McKissick's back behind the line. This is what they want. And an ace from McKissick. That is ace number four tonight. Ellie McKissick is serving on another level right now. <laughs> I mean, the sinker that we're getting from McKissick is something. It's a one-point set at the moment. We're going to 25, win by two. Brower to Evans. Dug out by McKissick. Muff to Victoria. She goes over the block. Cox with the diving dig. Victoria. Brower calls everybody off, sets Fisher, and Fisher sends it out of play off Canaan. It is set point Georgia. That's who they've been going to when they need a point. Canaan so, so close. And Sophie Fisher with great range is just really difficult to defend. Yeah. It's hard to cheat one way or the other. We've seen her go to both corners. Set point, Georgia. Ace from Fisher. She has done it all for the Bulldogs. And Fisher's ace after her kill single-handedly gives Georgia the two sets to one lead. So the Georgia Bulldogs trying to pull off the upset in Gainesville. The Gators are gonna need to push it to a fifth set. They are going to stay perfect. Three sets. What has to improve for Florida and what's got to keep going for Georgia? Georgia's offense on an absolute roll, plus 11 in terms of kills. It's really been Florida's blocking and serving that's kept them in this one. But again, I think they've got to find a little bit of a rhythm offensively. Look at Sophie Fisher. Because of her ability to attack that higher ball out of the middle, it's a little less conventional middle attack. It actually makes her more usable. You don't really have to be in system to get the ball to Sophie Fisher. She has the ability to just go up on a high ball out of system and take a big rip, and she does it with such poise, still swinging for those deep corners. Very, very... Um, 
disciplined, I think is the word, because even in what looks to be an out-of-system play, she is consistently turning those into points using smart tips. Fisher is a senior and single-handedly won the last two points of that set to give Georgia this two sets to one lead. So Florida will have to go to another five-setter in order to win this match. Fisher continues where she left off. Sam, I'm not sure that Kennedy Martin had a kill in that third set, to be honest with you. And so I think that is going to be a key piece of the puzzle for Florida if they can get Kennedy Martin back involved offensively. Yeah, she has been on eight kills for a while now. Service error by Bleeker, Point Florida. And you're seeing Alexis Stuckey there, Florida's All-American setter, who was injured in the match against Wisconsin just about a week ago. And so that is why perhaps Kennedy Martin right now offensively hasn't found that groove because guess what? Timing takes time. And so she and Kennedy Muff still working to find that connection. But I, I have to say there have been moments tonight where it has looked pretty good. Early on, I thought, wow, it looks like they found it. The back row attack connecting. Um, right now, it hasn't been a lack of connection. They just really have not found her. And so credit Georgia for keeping Florida so out of system with serves like that that they just cannot feed their star freshman. Bailey Cox again with an excellent serve. There's some history on the line for Georgia. As a member, we told you they beat Georgia Tech last weekend when Tech was ranked number 10 in the nation. They've never beaten a top 10 team twice in a single season. If they could hang on and beat Florida, that would be a milestone for Georgia. And in fact, this would be the best win by ranking Georgia's ever had as Florida is ranked number three in the nation, though we are quite a ways from that. But a lot on the line here for Tom Black and the Georgia Bulldogs. It's the SEC opener for Georgia. Another good serve. Muff with the set to Okamore. Brower, one hand set to Haugen. Victoria. Brower pushing it up against Okamore. Muff sends it over. Brower goes for the dump. Kept alive by the Gators. Haugen. One of the longest rallies of the match. Brower back to Fisher. Muff setting Martin over the block. Good dig by Downing. And Victoria finally ends it. Best rally of the match. The fans are appreciating what they just saw. Good volleyball all the way around. Finally an in-system look for Sophia, Sophia Victoria. Victoria now up to eight kills to Ty Martin. A must win set for Florida. McKissick targeting Cox on the serve. Fisher off the slide. Victoria again, she's got the hot hand right now for Florida. Sophia Victoria coming to life, it reminds me of the Auburn match. She didn't even get the start in set one. They were trying something a little different with their lineup, using Anna Dixon at the pin early, holding Sophia Victoria, then inserting her into the match in set two. And she was a lethal for Florida. What a great match she had. She also had back-to-back -back kills to end the Florida State match in the fifth wow. set. Muff back to Martin. There's the connection. And Martin gets her first kill in a while. And it comes off the Muff assist. Good job there by Kennedy Muff. Realize a right-handed player at the right pin. You've got to have a nice push all the way to the antenna to give her that shot down the line. That was her first kill since four all in the third set. Fisher hits right into the block and is stuffed by Dixon and Victoria. 
Sophia Victoria making her presence known in every facet of the game right now. Offense, add to it some defense. And the Gators tie the score, or excuse me, take the lead five to four here in this fourth set. Florida has played in five five setters this season. Georgia has not played in a single five setter. That ends a 4-0 run by Florida. Mary Wise and her staff, the entire team, throwing them into an adverse situation. They're trying to manage and stay one of the top, remain among the top teams in the country. Service error by Haugen, a free point for Florida. Trying to, as you said, maintain that high level of play in a conference that all of a sudden you look down at your schedule and there is not a weekend off. Lots of good volleyball. As in the SEC earlier today, Tennessee sweeps at Kentucky. So it just shows you the level of play increasing all the way around. Fisher getting another kill. The SEC last year actually led all conferences with seven teams selected to the NCAA tournament, including both of these teams. Georgia upset number eight seed Towson in the first round and fell to Texas. And Florida went all the way to the regional semis in Madison, losing to Pitt. Brower settles under it. Evans thunders it down, and Kennedy Martin can't dig it up. Free ball opportunity for Georgia. You're in the driver's seat. That's a point you've got to have, and Casey Evans takes care of business. Fisher now back on the service line. That serve a little too much. It's long. Service errors starting to creep into the Georgia service game here early in this fourth set. Ten errors now for the match and six aces. Trinity Adams, one of the better servers for Florida now behind the line. Good serve to Cox. It's going to be tough. Nice play by Brower. But Evans could not find the inside of the line, and the point goes to Florida. Brower, we mentioned earlier, running a 5-1 this year for the first time, and she is not a super tall setter up at the net, but she does such a nice job on those tight balls. Yeah. Gets up there and makes really good plays. I've seen it. We've seen her use one-handed set multiple times. You know, we, we talked about Fitzpatrick on the beach. She'd be an incredible hand setter on yeah, the beach. Yeah, they, they might want to team up. Yeah. Now there's Brower getting a little block. How about that, Brower? We just talked about how short she was at 5'9". Yeah. That's some pretty big vertical there. Yeah, what a, what a nice job because you know as an outside hitter, you're thinking small block lines open. But it's not exactly open with Clara Brower, though. Not my line, says Brower. Yeah. She goes back to serve now. We're tied at 8 and a must-win set for Florida. Georgia going for its second top 10 win of the season. Muff dumps. She is getting more and more comfortable with that. Six kills now, and she had zero coming into this match. A freshman middle blocker at the net for Georgia right now. So much on the mind of a middle blocker as they're thinking about so many different things. And Kennedy Muff realizes that was her opportunity, goes for it. Gators up one. It's set to 25, win by two. Fitzpatrick. Good dig by Brower, nice save by Downing. Evans really didn't have many options, and it was Muff and Okamore combining at the net to get that block. And setters love to outdo one another. <laughs> Just a moment, the block from Brower. Kennedy Muff answers with one of her own. Georgia taking a timeout as in a must-win set. Oh, that was nice. Muff and Stuckey embracing. And Florida up two as we head into the timeout. Defiance. 
You fought for 162 games. He's in there. Now your shot at glory is hanging by a thread. He caught it. The moment is here. Ball game. The MLB Wild Card Series on the networks of ESPN. Sophia Victoria helping to close the gap in terms of offensive production for Florida. She has nine kills so far today. This is a player limited a little a season ago. People didn't realize by her wrist injury. Well, you can tell she is looking 100% this season. Lots of power in that swing and blocking balls, along with those nine kills, three blocks as well. She had 13 kills against Auburn on Friday, and as you just mentioned, one shy of another double-digit effort. Dixon serving. Florida up by two in a must-win set here in the fourth. Georgia up two sets to one, and Evans siding out right away for the dogs. The power from Casey Evans, a really well-formed block by Florida, and she just overpowers it. Evans, 14 kills, trailing only Fisher's 17. And so with five digs, and again, the errors are starting to pile up here in the fourth set for Georgia behind the service line. It's 11 now. Enough back to serve for Florida. Brower to the middle, and it's out. Gooch unable to find the inside of the court on that attack. And Muff will serve again, Florida up three. Brower back set to Blakely, and Blakely is denied by Okamore. Another really nice pass by Mallory Downing, to be honest with you, she is putting the ball right on top of Clara Brower, but that Florida block, even better. Yeah, downing the Libero for Georgia, number 24 in red, has overcome open heart surgery as a freshman, came back to playing six months after that surgery. She had a heart defect. Blakely keeps it alive, another fantastic rally. Haugen tools the block, point Georgia. That was a scrappy rally. Such a smart swing by Estelle Haugen because you look across the net, you see Nady Okamore alongside Kennedy Martin, and you think absolutely Florida's going to win this one. Haugen's coming inside, looks like she has nowhere to go, and still such discipline to go high off the hands. Bleaker in to serve for Georgia, Florida up three. Muff puts up the set. Martin missed it. Point Georgia. Attack was wide for Kennedy Martin. Pulled toward right front. She's not swinging down the middle of the court there. And as she comes into right front, there's a little less space to work with. But nothing wrong with that connection. Good swing there. I go back to it. Muff. And they do. Yeah. Doing the same thing, but again, this time Martin misses on the opposite sideline. So much for a freshman to step in the collegiate game, and then all of a sudden, right when you feel like you found a groove in the season, an entirely new setter, a lot on the plate of Kennedy Martin. Georgia within one. Fitzpatrick. Muff setting Fitzpatrick again. No touch, point Georgia. And we are tied. Three straight hitting errors on Florida has tied the score. Four straight points for Georgia. Good service run here for Bleeker. Martin, Florida out of sync right now. And Georgia taking advantage of it. Mary Wise taking a timeout to try to get everybody on the same page here. Now 
while the teams are talking right now, let's remind you about our SEC Network featured volleyball matchup this Friday. Kentucky, who was swept today by Tennessee, will be at Georgia in the Ramsey Student Center Friday night at 7 Eastern. Kentucky's beaten Georgia the last five times they've played. That goes all the way back to 2019. Coverage will be on the SEC Network and the app. As we See. are just getting started here in SEC play. And with Kentucky struggling to find a rhythm themselves with the injury that Florida is trying to overcome and needing some time perhaps to find their group, you have to think that for teams like Georgia and Tennessee and Arkansas, all of a sudden things look pretty wide open. I felt that way coming into the conference to begin with, and now even more so. Uh, going to be very interesting to see how all this plays. The SEC now has suddenly become a, a premier volleyball conference. Mm -hmm. uh, SEC right up there with the Big Ten and the ACC in terms of volleyball success. It's fascinating what's happening in this sport. Uh, the SEC, again, with seven teams selected to the tournament last year. No conference had that many. You had Florida, Kentucky, Auburn, Georgia, LSU, Tennessee. Texas A&M will be here Wednesday night against Florida on ESPNU. And Texas A&M is another team to keep your eye on under first-year head coach Jamie Sullivan. Jamie Russell, excuse me. That's always so frustrating as a player to come out of that timeout and hand the momentum back to the other team. But what a nice run from the service line there by Anna Julia Bleeker. It was several errors on the part of Florida, but still Bleeker creating that pressure. Talking with assistant coach Aaron Benning. Canan in to serve. We're tied at 14. And that goes out. Canan just could not bring that down. We saw her have a serve earlier that dropped that one. Did not do that, just kept sailing. Yeah, early in the match, it felt like all of them were just dropping yeah. at the back line. And could Florida continue at that pace? As of this set, it doesn't feel that way. Several have floated long. And the service errors continue. What's going on, Missy? Wow. I think both of these teams understand the importance of creating pressure from the service line. It was, as Krista Blakely said to you coming into the match for Georgia, that was one of their keys. Florida knows as well that they put their blockers in a much better situation when they create pressure from the service line. But boy, as a fan, it can be difficult to watch. Well, McKissick's been the most consistent server for Florida. Haugen bumps it over. Martin keeps it alive. Muff in the middle to Dixon. And Dixon scores for Florida. And with Kennedy Martin a little uneasy right now in her connection, yeah. I think more balls to Anna Dixon. And you know, take a page out of Georgia's playbook. They're just hanging them up in the middle for Sophie Fisher. Florida will have an off day tomorrow, come back to practice Tuesday to get ready for A&M on Wednesday. But they get to stay here. Brower down the line goes Fisher and nails it. Off one foot, so we've seen the traditional two-foot attack, but she's completely capable off one foot as well. This more of a traditional middle blocker style attack. You think she might turn on it and bring it back cross court. She goes right down the line with it. Fisher is the unanimous choice for funniest team member. Apparently <laughs> has a fantastic sense of humor. You can tell by that celebration. Victoria goes right into the block. That is gutsy, and Victoria is rewarded with the point. You mentioned Florida's schedule moments ago, the fact that they opened on Wednesday night, played tonight, and then again on Wednesday against Texas A&M with all the changes that they're trying to make. They really couldn't have had a worse schedule. This is a team that desperately needs some training time. Brower setting Evans, and Evans tools the block for a Georgia point. And Brower just so good at understanding the needs of each attacker. That the, the set to Casey Evans looks different than the set does to, to Estelle Haugen. And she is great at placing that ball for each individual. Brower has 43 assists, 10 digs. Three of her attackers have double-digit kills. 
Here's Fisher out of the back row. Canan saves it. Free ball here for Georgia. Fisher dug up by McKissick. Victoria, nice up by Haugen. Joust at the net, still alive. Muff with the back set. Dixon off the slide. And I think that was Dixon off one foot on a traditional slide. We don't see much of this from her. Free ball opportunity, expecting the push to the pin, but no, Anna Dixon says, give it to me. A natural middle blocker, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Again, uh, Anna Dixon uh, volunteered to play in the middle this year for one season. Early in that rally, when there was a joust at the net, Tom Black felt like Kennedy Muff got a piece of the net. And so he's gonna challenge a play. It wasn't the final play of that rally, but early in that rally, they immediately motioned for a net violation on that play. Tom Black a challenge to call earlier and won. Both teams get two challenges per match. If you win the challenge, you keep it. The only way you have one taken away from you is if you lose the challenge. And uh, they're going back looking at that play. The net was definitely bouncing around, but I know the ball certainly sat on top of the net for a moment, and I'm not sure if Kennedy Muff was in the net or not. Yes, she was. So there was a net violation. Uh, Tom Black having a very good night challenging calls. That'll take away the kill from Dixon. Oh, no, I'm wrong. Oh, yeah, there yeah, it is. There okay. it is. The, down of the official motioned 2-4, I believe. He called the wrong number. It was not Anna Dixon in the net. It was Kennedy Muff, and he made the motion of 24, which is not correct, and that's why Mary Wise is questioning him right now. Florida is coming back out. Now, we have seen coaches re-challenge, but it does not appear that's going to be the case. Mary Wise was just asking for more of an yeah. explanation. So Georgia perfect in challenges tonight, keeps both. And it gives Georgia the one-point lead in this must-win set for Florida. Wow. And we're tied. Victoria comes is, to life. That is just so incredibly difficult. What Sophia Victoria just did right there, that high sky ball waiting on it, knowing you've got two blockers in front of you. And look at, look at Ellie McKissick again, out of system balls, and she is hanging. Beautiful sets up for her outside attackers. She is the only Gator in double digits with 11 kills. Adams targeting Cox with the serve. Brower puts up the set. Fisher out of the back row. They've got to get this over. McKissick does. Brower to Evans, and Evans just too much power for that Florida block. And Clara Brower's jump set, her ability to really hold the block. You don't know where she's going with it. She holds, look at that. You jump, you think maybe to the middle. And because of that, you see Anna Dixa leaning into the scene. She can't quite get there. And it's because of the setting move by Clara Brower. Yeah, that's a great point, Missy. She just seemed to hang in the air on that set. There's a service error. That's been the one thing Georgia has struggled with in this fourth set. Remember. Georgia wins this set, the match is over. Florida has to win it to take us to a fifth. Georgia trying to do something they've never done, beat two top 10 teams in a season. Sam, we're gonna get the blocking substitution from Florida. This is Maddie Gravely, a freshman. She's gonna come in to block at the right pin for Florida, that means there is no setter on the floor right now. So you're gonna see players out of the back court step in to pass balls up to the antennas. Brower setting in the middle to Gooch. Fitzpatrick. Evans blocked. And it is Gravely, the freshman. Her mother played for Mary Wise and was my partner's teammate. Yes, she was, and she was a Really good blocker. It looks like your daughter following in her footsteps. That is the first block in Maddie Gravely's career. Sub subbed in for the block, and she comes up with the point. Yeah, her mom, Julie, played for Mary and was your teammate. Evans oh. attacks this time, gets high hands, and we're tied at 20. Another block touch, though. That's what they're wanting from Gravely. That ball becomes much more playable if you can slow it down. She almost had it. 
Well, Grabley, one of those players uh, to keep your eye on in the future as she's playing behind some great players right now, but she'll get her turn. Evans serving. We're going to 25, win by two. Georgia wins the set, match is over. Fitzpatrick puts it out of play as Florida pursues a fifth set. What a great job by Kennedy Muff of creating tempo, a really high pass off the net, but she wants to give A.C. Fitzpatrick an advantage on that swing, so she lowers that ball and pushes it out to the antenna, creates tempo. Good serve from Muff. Evans retreats back to get it. Haugen bumps it over. I feel like Kennedy Martin needs to let that one go. Let her back row play that ball. That was a free ball opportunity. Haugen scores another kill, and we're tied at 21. Kennedy Martin taking some of those free balls, coming over the net, and I feel like those backcourt players have got to call her off. They miss an opportunity there, but Estelle Haugen out of system. Wow. So good. Haugen with 14 kills, only four errors. The tension building here in Gainesville. Fitzpatrick. Point Florida. Fitzpatrick and Victoria have become quite the one-two punch. And now we're going to see AC Fitzpatrick serve. Fitzpatrick does have one ace this season. Mm -hmm. And a nice jump serve. How about that? Put the radar gun on it. Good dig by Muff. Victoria. And the Gators getting closer to a possible fifth set. Chomp, chomp. Tom Black and the Bulldogs taking a timeout. And we will see if Georgia can fight off this Gator attack. And I tell you, this team, this Gator team, has relied so heavily on the freshman Kennedy Martin early in the season. There's been a setting change. Having trouble finding that rhythm on that tempo set to the right side. And so what have the seniors done? The seniors have played like seniors. We have seen Sophia Victoria and A.C. Fitzpatrick actually just step up to the table and take things over for Florida at Auburn. And then again today, these two, it's really fun to see seniors play like seniors, as Mary Wise often says, and that's what those two are doing right now. I think this is exactly what Florida wanted. They have had five of their yes. wins come from behind, and here we are again. Yeah, has anyone told them you don't have to play five <laughs> sets? That seems to be a trend for the Gators right now. But Georgia, only a couple points away from tying this one up and not just tying up the set, but taking this match. Yeah, this is going to be a fun finish here. Again, in Gainesville, Florida has been so good through the years. Mary Wise's teams have won over 80% of their matches on this court. And Florida right now, the third-ranked team in the nation. Georgia going for a second straight top 10 win. It was Georgia who came into Gainesville a season ago and stunned the then-ranked 11 Gators by way of a sweep. So this Georgia team is no stranger to success in Gainesville. They've got a feisty group here. Let's see how they respond out of this timeout. A.C. Fitzpatrick, who has not served in this match, just went back to the service line moments ago, served a bullet with her jump serve. Can she do it again? Evans takes the serve. Fisher with the off speed. Gators keep it alive. Victoria downing to Haugen. Side out, Georgia. The dogs within one. Fitting that Haugen should come up with that big kill because she is having a big day. Haugen up to 15 kills. Hard to believe she comes into this season with so little collegiate experience, such limited playing time a season ago. Not on the floor for Georgia last year when this team came here and got that big win. Cox serving. Canan took the serve. Muff pushes it out to the pin. And Victoria gives Florida a set point. And Kennedy Muff right now wisely feeding the left side all sorts of confidence for Sophia Victoria, and why not? The Gator faithful on their feet. 
It'll be McKissick serving at set point. Fisher. Muff keeps it alive. McKissick settles under it. And Georgia still alive as the dogs bite back and pull to within one, but it remains set point Florida. Guess what? Casey Evans to the front row for Georgia along with Sophie Fisher. Muff setting Victoria. We are going the distance in Gainesville. Make it four five setters in a row for the Gators. <laughs> It'll be to 15, win by two to determine who wins this match. As Florida trying to produce another come from behind win. Five of their nine wins have been from behind. And Sophia Victoria makes sure they'll have the opportunity to fight for another win from behind. Businesses need 5G solutions today. That's why they choose T-Mobile for business. MLB partners with T-Mobile to not only enhance the fan experience, but to advance how the game is played. AAA relies on T-Mobile's network to stay connected nationwide so they can help get their members back on the road. And we're helping Pano AI innovate to stop the spread of wildfires. Now's the time to see what America's largest 5G network can do for your business. Your first home sees a lot of firsts. From first loves to first steps. And with the Home Depot, you'll find the confidence to create the first place you call your own. The Home Depot. How doers get more done. Uh, these are our stats through four set service errors were a problem for Georgia in that fourth set, but the dogs continue to lead forward in overall kills, but uh, you cannot measure heart. And uh, that was <laughs> yeah. quite a comeback from Florida in that fourth set to force the fifth. Never a lack of drama when Florida and Georgia get together. That is certainly the case today. And Sophia Victoria providing some of that drama for us. What a match for the seniors. She is leading the way for the Gators with 14 kills, hitting 364. Florida really leaning into their left side pins right now with the change they've made at setter due to the fact that they lost their All-American Alexis Stuckey to injury. And so the, the rhythm with the quicker sets to the middle and the right side has not quite been established yet. They're going to have to really lean into their left sides. At Auburn, it was A.C. Fitzpatrick who stepped up with the huge match. Tonight, it's Sophia Victoria. Here in this fifth set, you have to expect Georgia to lean heavy on their veteran, Casey Evans, who you just saw moments ago. And I think both of these teams, boy, they're poor. Look at, look at the competitive intensity for both of these teams. They, they know that it's early in SEC play and yet every match is so vitally important, particularly in the race this year where there are about five teams bunched at the top, just itching to sort of claw their way and make a statement. You mentioned Victoria with 14 kills. She had seven of those in the fourth set alone. It's first to 15, win by two, wins the match. Georgia with the opening serve and an ace. Anna Julia Bleeker with a big opening serve to this fifth set. We mentioned Sophia Victoria with the hot hand. So Florida starts in the rotation where she's in left front. This is the first five setter for Georgia the entire season. And the service error following the ace. We're tied at one apiece. McKissick will be serving first for Florida exactly who they want behind the service line. McKissick tonight with four aces. Serves it at a downing. Brower setting Fisher. Canan sends it over. Good play by Canan to save that. Brower to Haugen, and Haugen 
terminates from the left side. Haugen has just been terminal at that left pin. You wondered who would step up and fill that role opposite Casey Evans. Estelle Haugen, coach said, we mentioned earlier, definitely their most improved player from a season ago. Absolutely no doubt about it. She is an impact player. 16 kills for Haugen, 16 for Evans, 18 for Fisher. Muff setting Victoria. She's blocked, and that went in. The ball trailed down the top of the net and fell in, giving Fisher and the Bulldogs the point. Clara Brower, the setter, up at the net. Just enough push on that one to find the court. Cox back to serve. Georgia up three to one. Every point magnified in this shorter fifth set. And Martin with the off speed gets the kill. And again, you see the connection not quite there. Credit Kennedy Martin for finding some court. But if you're joining us late, Kennedy Martin, who has been the offensive star for Florida all season long, Still trying to find a rhythm with Kennedy Muff at the setting position. Kennedy Martin right now third for the Gators in kills in this match, and that is not the norm. That was her 10th. So is it a downing? Haugen, or oh, Haugen. She is just ferocious on the attack. She is a leaper, as we see her right in front of us with just a huge approach. She gets off the floor. And you can just feel the intensity oozing out of her right now. Mm -hmm. As Georgia desperately trying to win this match. Muff to Dixon. She's blocked. Fisher and Evans. Really nice job by Casey Evans here because you see the ball is inside. If you're Anna Dixon, you need that pushed all the way out to the antenna so that she has a line shot open to her. It's not there, but Casey Evans does a great job of holding her hand steady. Victoria blocked. Canaan keeps it alive. Victoria trying again, off speed. Good dig by Cox. Victoria blocked off of Muff's body. This has got to go over. And Fisher puts it away. Georgia with a 6-2 to two lead right now as we go to 15 win by two. Timeout Florida as Georgia Missy's come out and established momentum right away. It started with the ace. Yeah, it did. And now, right now, it's happening with blocking at the net. They are just a fortress at the net right now. Sophie Fisher, Casey Evans both in on big blocks. Then you saw Sophie Fisher after a block at the right pin. Hang out over there and be available for a big attack. Also interesting to look at that Georgia huddle. It was Fisher and Downing, the seniors, really leading it. The coaches still have not gotten into the Georgia huddle. This is a player-led huddle right now as Tom Black and Aaron Denning, uh, the two assistants, stand outside the huddle. And uh, Aaron Johnson now stepping in, the third assistant, and addressing the team. But you have to love that in these pressure situations to see your players trying to take control, the, the upperclassmen. And for Florida, down six to two, what needs to happen for the Gators here? Well, Wilson? the fifth set is such a race. It is just so important to come out with your foot on the gas because 15 points come so quickly. And right now you just have to credit the intensity of Georgia in this fifth set. You're either going to take the floor and you're going to feel that pressure or you're going to go out, you're going to be the one putting the pressure on the opponent. And Georgia came out with an attitude of we are going to push the pace here. And the stats back it up. Georgia with an ace, two blocks, and three kills to open this fifth set as they come out the aggressor. We'll see if Florida responds after that timeout. Georgia again beat Georgia Tech last weekend, ranked 10th in the nation. Florida ranked number three in the nation. They've never beaten two top 10 teams and they've never beaten number three in the nation either. Muff pushes it out to Victoria. Good save by Cox. Evans. Muff, how about that? Didn't fool Downing though. Muff to Victoria. Victoria got the touch, point Florida.
Sophia Victoria in a really difficult situation there, and she doesn't try to do too much. That is what is separating her and AC Fitzpatrick right now. They're not trying to do too much. They don't go for a big kill when it's not there and hit into the block, but the high, deep corner swing. Adams taking that deep breath. Evans targets McKissick. She's waiting on it. Here's Fitzpatrick. Goes cross court and gets it. Georgia saying it was out, and now the up judge steps in and overrules the down official. Down official calls it out. Georgia could not believe it. Up official overrules it. But if I'm Mary Wise, obviously if there's any discrepancy there, you're going to go to the challenge card. So uh, the original call was good, and uh, then it was overturned. So that was called good, and that up judge said no, it was out, because Georgia's players immediately protested. And it's got to be clear to the official to overturn the call. Any part of that orange line is in bounds. And boy, this one's about as close as they come. If it catches the orange line, it is inbounds. Wow. I have to commend our officials, though, because of the challenges we've had so far, they have made the decision very quickly. I agree. Yeah, really nice job on the replay of getting the information quickly. And that has not always been the case. So good job tonight by this crew. And uh, while we've got time, good job tonight from our production crew here at the University of Florida who have produced a football game, a soccer game, and now a five-set volleyball match. That's a full <laughs> weekend right there. Yeah. If there is any blue that you can see, and I feel like this might be out. Well, again, the, the first call was in. The up judge overruled it out. Drum roll, please. It is Georgia's point. So Florida does not get the beneficiary of that call, and Georgia's lead builds to seven to three. A reminder, the fifth set goes to 15, win by two. Florida's only loss this year, a five set, Lost to Wisconsin. Service error by Fisher, seven to four. Here we go again. We're going to get the blocking <laughs> sub for Florida. Maddie Gravely will enter the match. And Anna Dixon, who doesn't always serve, looked like for a moment she was going to come off. They were going to leave her on to serve. Gravely made her presence felt the last time they made this switch, so they scored a point right away. Here's Dixon serving. Brower behind her, blocked, out of bounds, point Florida. A.C. Fitzpatrick coming up big. Will Clara Brower find Sophie Fisher out of the back row here? She always has Casey Evans at the left pin. Florida closes the gap to two. Brower to Evans. Evans again, she had fallen down, got up to hit that. Fisher. Fitzpatrick puts it away. Two straight points for A.C. Fitzpatrick, and the Gators are within one. And how about the freshman, Maddie Gravely, comes in as the blocking sub and gets a piece of a couple of them up there at the net. A.C. Fitzpatrick, the deadly duo, whether it's Sophia Victoria or A.C. Fitzpatrick, coming at you. Fitzpatrick now with 10 kills. Brower's dump, doesn't work. No setter on the four floor for Florida. Brower, the setter, puts it up for Evans in Georgia. And Evans hits it out. And the Gators have tied the score at seven. You can't swing out of bounds there if you're Casey Evans. Florida does not even have a setter on the floor. Make them play the ball. 
Timeout, Georgia. So explain that again, Missy, now that we have a little more time. When, when Florida takes the setter out, mm -hmm. how should Georgia expose that? So if you think about basketball, you see the offensive-defensive sub. That's what we're seeing here. Maddie Gravely, because Florida is serving, is subbed into the front row as a blocker. So they are going for good serve, let's defend, and score points with defense. If they don't and the rally is extended, they now have to run an offense without a setter on the floor. So all you're going to get are passes from the backcourt, out-of-system passes to either pin. Much easier to defend than a fast offense. So if you're Georgia right now, the reminder to the players is, hey, no setter on the floor for Florida. If we're in a bad situation, just extend the rally because we have a big advantage right now. So let's see if Georgia does that after the timeout. They just called. Again, we're going to 15 win by two to try to win this match. Georgia is trying to pull off the upset of Florida. It would be their second top 10 win this season. They've never done that before. And for Florida, trying to remain one of the top teams in the nation. They are ranked number three. They were honored today as potential number three seed in the NCAA tournament. And right now, the Gators have grabbed the momentum back with four straight points. Dixon will be serving. Brower to Fisher out of the back row. That didn't take long. You had to know it was coming. Need a point, find Sophie Fisher. So in volleyball, the teams change sides in the fifth set after the first 15 points. And let's go back to that last play. Right down the gut. Sophie Fisher hanging out there on the back line, not involved in serve receive, but certainly involved in the side out. And Fisher gets her 20th kill there to put Georgia up one on the side switch. Fisher, a senior from Fort Mill, South Carolina, played her first two seasons at Kentucky. And yeah. now, because Florida's back in serve receive, we'll see the substitution now to the offensive sub. Kennedy Muff back on the floor for setting purposes. Maybe Okamore onto the court for Florida as well. Brower serving. Muff with the set. Martin off speed from behind the line. And Georgia doesn't handle it. Point Florida. The call from the up official is that the first contact by the blocker was actually a hit, not just a block. Had she blocked it yeah. and then made a play on the ball, that would not be a double contact. And I, this is not challengeable. So they're going to say that was a that was tip, a hit. and then she dropped low and played it with her fist down below her waist as well. Had they accounted the initial contact as a block, she would be allowed to make a second contact with the ball. That is the up official's discretion that cannot be challenged. And as a result, we are tied at eight. Muff serving for the Gators. Brower pushes it out to Evans, and Evans unleashes a little frustration. Big swing by Casey Evans in a big moment, and no surprise, she comes through. Nine to eight. And we're tied at nine. Florida Great. trailed 12 to nine to Auburn on Friday and came back and won that match. We're tied at nine here. Great communication I was noticing on the part of Ellie McKissick because Trinity Adams was trying to make a decision. Was she gonna play that pass? And it was Ellie McKissick calling that ball out of bounds. It's Patrick, I love that serve. Okamore cleans it up. And the Gators hit the 10 point mark first. That is a ball that Florida can struggle with. As easy as it looks, it's a ball that is often not a point for Florida, and so that's a big one. It's Patrick with another chance behind the line. Ace! The gamble here to go with the aggressive serve of AC Fitzpatrick, and it pays off for a couple Gator points. Unleashes on it with tons of top spin. 
That prompts Georgia to take a timeout as Florida up 11 to 9 here in the fifth set. We go to 15 win by two. Gators just survived a grueling five setter at Auburn on Friday. That went 17 15 in the fifth mm -hmm. on Auburn's floor. Yeah. And that is a really dangerous. We talked about Georgia being a dangerous team in this league. Auburn dangerous. I don't even know if you consider them dangerous. At this point, they're pretty well known. Yeah. That match was actually the first top 25 matchup at Auburn ever as they were ranked when they hosted the Florida Gators. Well, Florida has made a reputation so far this season not only of beating top programs, but playing and winning five-set matches. Now, this is their fourth straight five-setter. They did lose one to Wisconsin. That's the only one they've lost this year. And within that match to Wisconsin is when the injury to their All-American setter, Alexis Stuckey, took place. And so within that match, they're trying to make adjustments to an entirely new lineup in Wisconsin was able to come back on them after Florida up 2-0 and looking like they were in position to possibly sweep the number one team in the country. So is this fun or what? This wow. is why this sport is just skyrocketing right now in popularity. AC Fitzpatrick serving with Florida up 11-9 in the fifth. Victoria with the block. And it all starts with that serve. Sophia Victoria for as great of an arm as she has, she is just as good of a blocker. Georgia desperately needs to get Fitzpatrick off this service line. Just Ooh. missed it. Wow. She did it for them. I mean, that was inches out. Maybe not even the S on the end of inches. <laughs> but Mary Wise will take it. A string of points from her senior. Four straight points behind Fitzpatrick's serve. Georgia within two. Here's Bleeker. Muff, tight set. Brower to Fisher. McKissick will set Victoria. Haugen puts wow. it down. Georgia within one. The angle from Haugen right there, impressive. The jump set from Brower, and look at that. Just goes up high and cuts it. Muff with the set to Victoria. Kept alive by Brower. Here's Haugen. Blakely. Victoria. Oh, good D by the dogs. Haugen into the net. Point Florida. I tell you, the point goes Florida's way, but credit Blakely there in right yeah. front. The sub that's come in over the course of this match for Georgia. She had a couple key block touches that allowed the defenders behind her to play that ball from, from Sophia Victoria. And it's McKissick back behind the service line for Florida. Florida two points away. Brower to Fisher. That is one of the rare errors by Fisher, and it gives Florida match point. And when you say rare, you mean rare, Sam. Only her fifth error on the day with 20 kills. 47 swings. Match point, Gators. Muff keeps it alive. McKissick out to Martin. Evans pursuing. We're still playing. Canan to Muff. Victoria. Sophia Victoria with another match-ending kill. 
and an improbable come from behind victory for the Florida Gators as Georgia puts up an incredible fight and comes up just short against this Gator team. We said this is a Gator team that's recalibrating and there were moments where you saw it where the timing wasn't quite there. However, AC Fitzpatrick and Sophia Victoria continue to put this team on their shoulders and it looks like their backs against the wall. These seniors keep coming through. Well, what a celebration as uh, Florida comes from behind again and stays unbeaten at the start of SEC play and continues to navigate these uncharted waters without Alexis Stuckey. Mary Wise has said over and over again how much she loves this team and it's not because of their wins and losses but it's because of the character of the individuals that make it up and uh, they are showing that brilliantly right now. Sam, you can't teach heart, can you? No. You can't. It's hard to teach fight. You certainly can't teach heart, but you can see it. And we watch four consecutive five setters, a team that is just battling to try to overcome adversity. And wow, they have done it again. Dave Boos, a uh, longtime assistant there on the right, getting his turn to talk to this team. It was fun watching him th go through the scouting report today to mm. They're doing a lot of teaching right now in practice. You better believe it. And a scouting report from Dave Booz isn't like any other. It is thorough and it is complete. And his players are very well prepared defensively. And it's showing up <laughs> in matches. Look at that. Wow. The Kennedy mentor Moss. relationship on this team within position is so evident. Uh, Alexis Stuckey uh, is now in the role of mentor and coach. And uh, her presence continues to be valued so much by this team. She's never had a platform, I think, so great to show the people around her what she's made of. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing her come back. See Kay Canope there uh, talking to her, one of the assistants. We're stalling a little bit for Sophia Victoria to get had the to, headset on. Had to on. give her a, a so, moment to celebrate. Yeah. Much deserved. Now you're with us. Congratulations on that win. Thank you. Yeah, winning five setters coming from behind is starting to become uh, pretty normal for you guys. But can yes. you take us through some of the things that you guys were talking about tonight as you tried to come back and force that fifth set? Yeah. Um, we kept talking about keeping our fight up. Um, we're a team that fights um, until the end. And now we've noticed that we like to go to five sets. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, talking about our fight, our connection, um, we have a really great vibe. So when we keep our vibe up, we just win. <laughs> Sophia, you mentioned the connection. And obviously for the quicker sets, it's going to take some time as you guys adjust to a new setter. But you and AC, you don't seem to need any time at all. You guys already have it figured out. <laughs> How are you so quickly making this adjustment? Um, it's not coming easy. Um, there's times that still you can see like we haven't still like figured it all out. Um, but we've been working every day in practice, even in games, our communication with Moff, our setter, mm -hmm. um, and our communication with our passers too. Like everyone's gotta be all in um, to be able to keep that um, good connection with Moff. As you continue to make those adjustments, defense becomes even a little more important, I feel like. Yes. And you guys as left side blockers have raised your level. That was a huge piece of your success today. Have you committed more time to that? Um, yes, we have, but we've committed more time to offense mm -hmm. um, since we recently just lost Tucky. So, like, we need to work more on our connection with Muff. But even still, like, it's all been mental. Um, and AC and I, even all pins, we've been working on our block all season and all preseason. So, like, we've just been stepping up our game every day. It shows. Well, Thank Sophia, you. I hear you're an amazing salsa dancer, so I want to teach you, I want you to teach your teammates some salsa dancing and come up with a gator salsa yeah. when you win these dramatic matches. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, right? I've tried. I've tried to teach a couple actually <laughs> and right. also bachata. Well, we're going to let you get back to the locker room. You have a match coming up again in a couple of nights. Congratulations. Thank it you was, so much. Uh, such a joy for us to watch Absolutely. that match. Thank you so much. Sophia Victoria and the Florida Gators. Another come from behind win as Florida rallies to beat Georgia. An incredible effort by the Bulldogs. Florida off to a 2-0 start in SEC play.
And now 10 and 1 on the season for Missy Whittemore and our entire hardworking team. And I mean it here at Florida. I'm Sam Gore saying so long from Gainesville. Girani hamariya kiya se, girani hamariya kiya se, aswa girai se dilawaro, ay girjan, girani hamariya kiya se, aswa girai se dilawaro. I'm a 